Uh, good afternoon. I think a uh, joy. Welcome to meteorology. Yeah, that's me. Hi, thank you. Uh, all right. So we'll start our presentation. We're waiting for a few other people, but they can join and I could always answer questions as we go forward. Oh, we've got more. Perfect timing. So we'll wait for uh, Mohin to join. Just give it a couple of seconds. Okay, so welcome Mohin and so Joy. So I'll start by introducing um, the meteorology program at the University of West Indies. Welcome to our presentation this afternoon. My name is Kathy Ann Caesar. I am the chief meteorologist at the Caribbean Institute of Meteorology. Along with me is my colleague, Dr. Andrea Seely, who is also a meteorologist at the Caribbean Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology why the Caribbean of Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology when you're coming to CIMH. We are actually a collaborative um, organization working in collaboration with UE to actually responsible for the meteorology program, degree program at UE. So I'll explain a, a little bit about what we do and what the program is all about. So meteorology, as you know, the study of weather and you know, why you're interested, what you need. And as you'll see through the presentation, um, while a lot of people think it's about geography, weather is basically the study that involves math and physics, which are very important. And it allows you well as well, you have to be able to speak properly. And computer sciences also is a, a great asset, which is becoming more important. So what subject areas can um, we study when we do meteorologists and what uh, areas of work can we look at? Uh, it is a study of atmosphere and atmospheric phenomena. Hold on, sorry, I don't know if, sorry about that. And um, basically what you're studying here, you can study about observing, measuring, analyzing the weather, modeling, and estimating atmospheric processes. Of course, forecasting uh, is in that. What can I do after I've completed such a degree? Uh, you can become an aviation meteorologist, broadcasting, you can get into the study of climatology and climate change. Agrometeorology is becoming very important, using meteorology to optimize our agricultural produce, very, very popular now going forward. Tropical meteorology, marine meteorology is getting um, very important, weather modeling is becoming, and even with our counterparts, hydrometeorology in the Caribbean, especially, and in a lot of areas, the world like Israel, is always important. What subject areas do I need? And we're looking here at both hydrology and meteorology because that's one of the areas um, that we also are responsible for at CIMH. Most importantly, you need the math and physics. These are the foundation topics, uh, subject areas coming into the program. And from there, you can add things like computer science, engineering, hydrology, atmospheric science to build to, for you to become a meteorologist or a hydrologist. In between there, we put uh, geophysical modeling. Again, modeling and modeling what is happening in the weather in terms of water is becoming an extremely important uh, topic to study. And so we put it there as an additional area of study. But from this, you can become a tropical meteorologist, climatologist, as I said, agrometeorologist, or on the hydrology side, hydrology engineering or water resource management person. And you can uh, uh, go in on to be a researcher, university lecturer or consultant. Many areas that you can expand into. And I'll actually, at the end of this presentation, look at some of those things that you can go into in more detail. So why meteorology? You ask yourself, am I curious about what, about the weather and the world around me? Do I want to, how do I want to apply science in my field? You know, what ideas of basic scientific principles can I look at in terms of the behavior of the weather around me? Do I like using math to describe what is going on? Not many of us do, but some of us do. And what cool things can I look at? Can I look at using satellites? Can I look at using radars, computers? Uh, how, what are all these things I can actually be interested in and how that can apply? Those are all things that you can apply going into meteorology. And there is so much to do. So. Let's get into the basics. What do I need to come into the university program? You need, and um, I, I should ask, I will ask you where you're from, but we usually look at the five, what we call O-level subjects. Um, and these are basic uh, or university level subjects, sorry, I should say high school, advanced high school subject areas in English, language, physics, and math. 
those are the basic topics you need to come in into the program. Uh, chemistry and geography are assets, but not quite necessary. You need to have a good command of the English language coming into the university program. Uh, Barbados is mainly uh, English speaking. And so that is um, a part of the program and that is part of the uh, qualifications to come in. We also do encourage our students to do a foreign language. Why? Once you have completed this program, I'll explain that a little bit later. Once you've completed the degree program under the World Meteorological Organization, you are qualified to work anywhere in the world as a meteorologist. And therefore having an, a foreign language gives you that added advantage to go anywhere. So as I said, basic advanced uh, math and physics, uh, what in the Caribbean, we usually say that's CAPE math unit one and two or physics one and two. However, if you do not have these subjects, the university does allow you to come in. It adds a year onto your program where you can do the prelim math one and prelim math two and physics math and physics, sorry, uh, level one. And that allows you to matriculate into the program. So no need if you don't have those programs already, you can do them at UE, just puts a year onto your program. And then, so you, one of the things we also do recommend that you also think about doing a minor or a double major with the meteorology, giving yourself a broad width to graduate with. So math and math is very popular, math and computer science or math and physics are also. We also have people doing math and management. Again, if you go into a meteorological organization, they need management people to help them run. So if you have that kind of qualifications where you can actually understand what's going on in the meteorology, it gives you that kind of an advantage. Sorry. So going forward, just a brief, um, you know, I'm gonna skim through this basically to tell you what the curriculum is like. Uh, after you've done your prelim subjects, or you have the, the subjects to, to, uh, to come into, matriculate into the program. Uh, year one, you're going to do a lot of the introductory topics, oceans and climate, uh, introduction to observations, instruments, and the basic analysis. Those allow you to get the basic, your hands dirty into the subject. Then we start with the introduction to physical met, or uh, what is the structure of the atmosphere, all those topics. Um, what are the chemistry of the topics, of the atmosphere, sorry. Um, in semester two, you also have to do an introduction to dynamics. We get a little bit more into the equations, not too far in, but we get a little more equations into the math. Notice here that you have to do a, uh, additional calculus programs. So you have to do calculus A and calculus B. And uh, we also suggest that you do at least one computer program. The university does insist that you do foundation courses. You have to do three foundation courses anytime in your middle, uh, your career at the university, but you have to do them before you are able to graduate. So you'll see in this list at least three foundation courses that you need to do going forward. It allows you to the breath. We also have what you call this courses that are level one courses. We allow you to take additional courses that will give you the opportunity to get another major as well or minor. So level two, you get into the hardcore courses. So you're gonna see things like atmospheric uh, thermodynamics, dynamic meteorology, uh, another one more math course uh, physical met, synoptic met, again, you're getting into the hardcore. So my students like to say, oh, ma'am, this is when the clouds kind of disappear. Yeah, they disappear a little bit. You're going to see a little bit more mathematical formulas, but it's all to explain what you're going forward and going forward. And then we go to year three and then getting to more hardcore topics. Once you've completed these programs, uh, you will be able now to graduate once you've completed and most of them. As I said, you'll be able to take other subject areas to get another minor or uh, double major. So this is the curriculum for the three years. Now, as I said before, um, it's important to know that our program under the CIMH in collaboration with UE is recognized as under the World Meteorological Organization as a BIPM, and what is a basic package for meteorologists. And that allows you to be qualified as a meteorologist, a person who has completed this package at the university level this is recognized worldwide. What is a BIPEM? And you'll see that it reflects a lot of the subject areas that I had in the curriculum. You have to complete physical meteorology, dynamic meteorology, 
synoptic meteorology and climatology. And if you work in the tropics, you have to do tropical meteorology as well. But once you have done this, this is recognized internationally that you are a meteorologist and you can take that qualification anywhere you need to go. So why is this important? I stepped this in here a couple of years ago. Um, and the World Meteorological Organization in 2016 did a little bit of a survey as to what is the retirement requirement, what was, who is going to retire in five years. And you can see here, especially in the Americas, there's going to be a need for many meteorologists going forward. So the job opportunities are again endless. Okay. And so we kind of do this to encourage people that once you meteorology might sound far-fetched but there is a lot of opportunity going forward what can i do so i'll just look at a couple of specialized areas in the last couple of minutes that we have here i think i'm a little bit ahead of time so what can i do with a meteorology degree one of the most popular ones i can study hurricanes and they actually are hurricane specialists um they are hard hurricane specialists within the Caribbean, but also in under the National Meteorological, sorry, under the National Hurricane Center, sorry, under the US, they have forecasters who all they do is track, monitor, and forecast on hurricanes. Uh, this you can also not also work on what they call the reconnaissance flight aircrafts too, if you get that opportunity. But this is an opportunity that you allow that, that you can get into. One of the more popular ones that are becoming very fast, um, uh, getting up in uh, more popularity is what we call impact-based forecasting. You'll find in the next couple of years that your forecast is gonna change a little bit. Forecasters are not gonna just tell you it's going to rain. Uh, it's gonna rain or it's gonna be sunny. They're actually going to relate that to how it impacts you on a daily basis. So instead of saying it is going to rain heavily today, tomorrow, no, we're going to say there might be rain enough that will affect your traffic in certain areas. You will not be, it may cause flooding in one area or it may make other areas impassable. You're going to actually hear the effects of what that weather is going to be. And this is what we call impact based forecasting. And so it, as you see here, um, and property damage, business interruptions, all of those things are what we look at in terms of the impact-based forecasting, especially when we have a severe weather situation. Now, um, another area that's kind of kind of fun for me is that I, I really like to think about forensic meteorology. And what do I mean by forensic meteorology? You may not think about it on a daily basis, but it's actually a prop, one of the popular things that uh, is done. If you, if, God forbid you've ever been in an accident, one of the first things you see on the accident form is what was the weather like at the time of the accident? That is actually forensic meteorology, diagnosing how the weather affected a particular event. A little bit of a morbid one, but it's kind of popular um, in, in terms as well. In, when someone actually dies, actually determine how, far, how long they have been um, deceased, you actually have to know the weather conditions. And so, there's a lot of things, especially that um, we answer questions on a daily basis, either in insurance, either in police matters, or even buildings, that has to do with what we call forensic meteorology. And there are other areas that you can look at. There's disaster mitigation, what happens after or during a disaster. Looking at space weather, especially with our use of technology, cell phones, aircrafts. What happens with the sun actually affects our weather and affects these, um, these normal things that we have today, even watching television. So there are agencies around the world which monitor the sun's activity at all times. And of course, marine weather in the islands or if you're even up in uh, along the world, knowing how marine and weather uh, uh, affects our daily lives is also very important. The future, the future is wide ranging. Things we wanna look at, modeling, weather modeling, insurance, private weather forecasting and consulting companies. The, 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 the amount of opportunity is, I repeat, is just so much as endless. And of course, in the traditional uh, meteorological jobs, they are also going to be widely uh, needed going forward. So there are many opportunities for you. I would gladly share this with you and I, I welcome any kind of questions that you would have. Uh, so again, my name is Kathy Ann Caesar, and I will ask, um, I'll turn it over now to Andrea to continue with the presentation. Thank you. 
Okay, great. Thanks, Kathy Ann. And um, before we continue, we have a few minutes for any questions. So if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself if you can, because um, I realize some of you may not have the audio set up, but if you can, you can type your questions in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask any questions. And since there's so few of us, if you want to, you can introduce yourself and say what you're interested in, in terms of what you're interested in studying and if it's undergrad, like undergraduate or postgrad, feel free if you want. To. So we got a couple of minutes for that. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, let us know shy. if you're interested. Don't be shy. <laughs> I know Joy came on, she logged on first. Joy, you wanted to introduce yourself, maybe say if you're interested in undergrad, postgrad, if it's meteorology or related science. I mean, if you want to, go right on ahead. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. Oh, hi, everybody. I'm in grade 11. Um, uh -huh. I'm in Ottawa right now, Ontario, Canada. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, a quick question. I was just wondering, like, what kind of activities would you do in that course? Like, is there a lot of field study stuff? Is it more, um, I don't know, like textbook based? Oh, uh, at every level there is a, a lab. And those labs, particularly it's in the first year, there is a little, it's not quite field study. You have to actually go out and do observations. Um, we train you how to do observations and then you learn how to do analysis. We actually train you at, um, how to manage and how to maintain equipment, meteorological equipment. Uh, second year, it's going to be more application. How do I um, look at a weather chart or how do I produce a weather chart and then explain it? And then year three, again, it's more explanation, actually going out and using models. Um, there is, uh, we used to have a radar, but since the radar is, uh, is not operational, but we do at least have one field trip to the radar. And hydrology has actually, um, actually you go out into a river to do hydrological measure measurements. So there is a couple of field programs and it's, there are definitely practicals. Meteorology has to have that practicals for you to understand. So it's not all textbook. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome there. You're welcome. And I hope it's not too cold in Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little. <laughs> a little nippy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyone else? And don't be shy, there's a lot to, we have time. And if at any point you wanna ask a question and we've already moved on to the other presentations or you're too shy to unmute and talk, you can actually type it in the chat because we will have time after the next couple of presentations and just mm -hmm. before the end for more questions or discussion, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I will take over from here and as Kathy had said earlier, I am Andrea Seeley, and I, am, I too am a meteorologist at CAMH. I lecture in the undergraduate program at Kathy, but I also coordinate the research programs at CAMH. And the research programs basically have to do with the students who are doing their research masters and doctorate PhDs. And the interesting about, thing about it is that even though we deal with meteorology, we have students who are also interdisciplinary at the, grad, the postgraduate level. So I'm going to share my screen and talk a little bit about that. So just give me a couple minutes here to just get this done. All right. Let me just start this right here. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you a little bit, it'll probably take me about five to seven minutes or so to tell you a little bit about the research. And in telling you about the research programs, the, re the postgraduate opportunities available, I'm going to give you snapshots of what our students have actually done or are doing to show you how interdisciplinary it is and a little bit about their backgrounds. So basically, as you would have realized, we are um, a meteorology and hydrology and related science, sciences institute. So we get pretty interdisciplinary. And these are some of the areas of research that the staff or the major research interests of the staff at CAMH. This list is not exhaustive and this list represents 
a good few vast diverse types of areas. So we have numerical weather prediction, which is basically modeling. And it would not just be meteorology or atmospheric modeling, but also hydrological, hydrometeorological, environmental modeling as well, or sciences-based type of modeling. Aerosols and air quality. So that also involves not just the basic meteorology, but atmospheric chemistry as well. Um, tropical meteorology, hurricanes, tropical cyclones, everybody's favorite topic when it comes to studying meteorology in the, in the tropics. Um, hydrometeorology, statistical forecasting, remote sensing, radar and satellite and LIDAR, short and long-term forecasting, climate variability and climate change. So quite a few of our students have been involved in atmospheric science field work. And on this slide, you actually see one of these students who was an undergrad. She has her degree and she's continued on to do her master's in meteorology at the, uni at the university. So she's still based at CMH. And she actually did some atmospheric chemistry field work with the University of Leeds, where they actually brought their container, which is a traveling lab, to Ragged Point on the east side of Barbados in summer of 2017. And they were looking at uh, ice nucleating particles, um, if, the, if dust could be used to actually cause nucleation and make ice crystals in clouds, that kind of work. We also have numerical weather prediction and a number of interns and some students have worked on uh, aerosol and air quality modeling. We do various types of modeling, as I said, a lot of weather and climate modeling along with hydrological modeling. And this is an example of the Wharf Chem, which is the model we use to run for our aerosols and air quality, usually for our forecasting Sahara dust and the particles that affect air quality as a result of these Saharan dust episodes. But it could also be used for urban dust, urban pollution. So these are the kinds of things that you could actually be doing in terms of numerical weather prediction. And we have a number of members of staff who are very, very versed in, weather, in modeling various types of earth science and atmospheric science modeling. So you would be able to get guidance in this area, very good guidance. And then we have tropical meteorology. One of our current grad students is working on the rapid intensification of Hurricane Maria um, in 2017. We know that was one of the major hurricanes that season, caused a lot of damage. And of course, because of how rapidly it grew into a major hurricane, um, this is something that a lot of meteorologists in this area that are interested in tropical cyclones want to study Maria. So one of our current master students is studying uh, Hurricane Maria. And she has a meteorology background. We also have some students who are interested or have worked in climate research and climate services. And CIMH is the regional climate center under the WMO for this region. So there's a lot of work going on not only in just the climate science, things like forecasting and warnings for drought, heat waves, rainfall, et cetera, but also statistical modeling of climate, looking at things like heat waves and human health, air quality and human health, and also social sciences research. So that work is also interdisciplinary because along with the scientists, the physical scientists in the climate section, we also have social scientists, the specialized social scientists as well. So this is another area that there, there's a plethora of opportunities in terms of the kind of work you could do. And then we go on to more of the atmospheric chemistry side of things. Uh, Sonola's work has to do with using chemistry models, a number of chemistry models to predict long and short wave ash transport in the case of volcanic eruption. Sonola's MPhil, her master's is in environmental studies but her background is chemistry. Her bachelor's is in chemistry. So she's based at CAMH. She's not a meteorologist, but she's interested in the atmospheric chemistry part of the atmos of atmospheric science. So this too is another way that you could actually work with us at CAMH and you're not limited or pigeonholed to just one particular area. And then we have Darlene Field who's supervised by me. And she's a PhD environmental student with environmental studies student with a physics and renewable energy background, not a meteorologist, but her work is interdisciplinary with the meteorology and atmospheric science because she's looking at 
how dust influences or affects the performance of solar panels, solar photovoltaic panels. And she's looking at this study in terms of atmospheric particulates and dust and how it affects the power output of these so of the solar panels. And then we have another student who's doing her PhD in environmental studies. And she is looking at a kind of social science also married with physical science in terms of looking at shifting to renewable energy. And she's using the KFL campus as an example of how we can push that with our large utility company to shift the island of Barbados towards renewable energy, 100% renewable energy by 2030. So this too is also a very multidisciplinary approach to this, this, um, this problem or to this issue in terms of how you make that shift. And this is still within the Faculty of Science and Technology, but it is interdisciplinary. We have a PhD meteorology student and her background is almost totally meteorology, but her work too is also, also interdisciplinary in terms of looking at the effects of temperature and other weather and climate variables on electricity consumption in Barbados. And this work itself also has to do with using data from the utility company and also marrying that to the weather and climate. So another interdisciplinary uh, approach to a, a problem that you can still study under a physical science uh, institution such as ours and under the Faculty of Science and Technology at the University of the West Indies KFL campus. So I really wanted to let you see that we have these various areas. And when you're talking about postgraduate study, it is kind of difficult to just pigeonhole into one area. And in terms of the work that we've been doing and the vast interests of our staff and also those students who potentially want to, to, to do their postgraduate degrees with us, um, along with those who already work with us, you have such a vast set of backgrounds and interests that we don't necessarily pigeonhole ourselves to just meteorology or hydrology or hydrometeorology, but our students are doing a number of things and a lot of research in various areas of the earth, atmospheric sciences and related sciences. So I would like to thank you for um, listening to our spiel, both on the undergraduate side and on the postgraduate side. And if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat or on mute and go ahead and ask any questions you may have. Thank you. No questions? I know Joy already introduced herself and she asked her question. I see we have Grace joining us. If you have any questions, Grace, feel free to type in the chat if you don't want to unmute and ask a question. So before we finish up, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you in terms of, well, we showed you undergraduate, we showed you the postgraduate, but we know our students have the student associations and we have student life. And basically in terms of the kind of activities we have, we actually have what is called the UWI Cave Hill Meteorology Society. And that is our student organization. So I have a presentation with the help of the students that I'm gonna show you. And it'll only take about a few minutes. And this is gonna be the final presentation before we have any last few minutes for discussion and wrapping up. So I'm gonna show you this student presentation in a bit, let me just share the screen. Okay.
Okay, thank you very much for joining us. Now, before we go and before I let Kathy wrap up, just wanted to add a couple things. Meteorology, the meteorology program is a small program because we don't have as many students as other programs do. So it is like one family. It is a very family oriented major. Everybody knows everybody. And it is, you have easy access to the lecturers, um, your instructors and um, they're, they're, we're all very approachable. We have a very student-centered approach in terms of our training, in terms of how we deal with our students, in terms of our daily work, in terms of our dealing with pedagogy and dealing with students and student life. So think about it and consider us if you are considering coming to study at UWIK Phil and you are interested in meteorology or sciences and related sciences. So it was a pleasure talking to you. Kathy, any final words? Oh, yes. So just a couple of final words. One of the things that we, and I just realized that we did not mention, we have a very healthy internship program um, where uh, we do encourage uh, graduates, so not even graduates, uh, uh, current students. Once they maintain a high GPA, they can be uh, involved in our internship program. And we almost have 100% um, success rate with that in where all of the students who have gone through our internship program have either gone on to do graduate school or are involved in a job right now um, and at the highest levels. And I'll just wanna share my screen really quickly um, because this only came in today where one of our past graduates is because of her work and she was actually featured in one of, was actually featured in a presentation at the American Meteorological Society um, uh, using the same dust modeling and dust observations uh, from Barbados to monitor a large Saharan out dust outbreak uh, in 2019. I believe this was, oh, this was 220. No, this is 20. Yeah, yeah, this is a, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunities are, as I said, are really great. It's really exciting. It's a small community. Um, as the head of department, I was really proud of the presentation that I would say my students or my children do. I, I do uh, really proud of, of, of the work they can do and the work that you can do. And one thing that we like to tell you as students is that we not only prepare you for a degree in meteorology, but anywhere in the, at the university, we prepare you for jobs that do not exist. It is always a vibrant world that it's 
changing as we go forward. And in whatever degree or whatever um, opportunities you want at Cave Hill, we were already actually there to help you attain that goal. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Any questions, any last questions? Anyone wants to say anything? Or type in the chat. Ah, it was a pleasure to have you, Grace. <laughs> You're very welcome. Grace, where are you from? Just out, out of curiosity. You can type in the chat if you don't want to talk. <laughs> you can type where you're from if you want to. And your interests. Oh, Canada. Oh, oh British, British Columbia. Columbia. Oh, nice. Right. Sweet. Thanks are you, joining. what level are you? Uh, high school, undergrad, postgraduate, other interested person? Mm -hmm. uh, I think Emily just joined. I don't know if Emily has any questions. Oh, an undergraduate oh, environmental mm -hmm. studies. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. So you're in the right place. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and if you missed any of it, the recording will be available. And feel free to email us as well. So you would be perfect um, for postgraduate studies because we do have, we do mentor and supervise postgraduate environmental studies students as well, the meteorology lectures. So that's fine. That's perfect. Perfect. And we do have an environmental studies department as well. Yes. Okay. So if you're even thinking of study abroad, well, you're an undergraduate. That's an option as well. And then postgraduate too. Hi, Emily. Welcome. And thanks for joining us again, Joy. Mm -hmm. Emily, Hi, do you have any questions? <laughs> any questions? What are your interests? What are you doing now? What are you studying? Um, what level are you? <laughs> Feel free to type in the chat, but you can unmute yourself if you want to. Oh, great. International mm -hmm. Development Studies. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, that's there. Fantastic. That is excellent because again, one of the uh, world organizations is the World Meteorological Organization, which studies all levels of um, both environmental science and the political ramifications of that. So again, this is another way in which you can um, actually broaden. And the good thing about it is like I have mentioned before, you would have access to the recording, Emily, because you may have missed it but we actually do have social scientists who work with us and work for us. Mm -hmm. So um, you would not be, even though you're internet, even though you're not physical science, you are still right on track in terms of international development studies because uh, environmental issues, atmospheric science issues, earth science issues are all issues that we have people who are at the international level in terms of diplomacy, et cetera, work mm -hmm. along with these, along with scientists on these issues. So that is perfect. Yeah. As Angela mentioned, we have a social scientist with us and mm -hmm. uh, she has been extremely busy <laughs> over the last couple of years yes. since she joined us. Yeah. Right. Even Just in my you. work, even in my work, I deal with air quality. So I have to liaise with public health people and I actually liaise with the World Meteorological Organization quite a bit. So yeah, these issues are issues that we all need to, it's all hands on deck actually in terms of the various disciplines. So yeah. Feel free to, we'll make the recording, the recording is going to be available so you'll be able to get some more information and our contact information would have been provided when the, the ad, the ads with the details for our webinar went out. So feel free to contact us um, at any time. I will type our email addresses in here though, just in case you want to, in the chat box, just in case you want to get them as well so that is me and i will type kathy's that's for kathy ann and i type mine i'll retype mine well you could put in the web the web page as well for cn yes yeah yeah i have to go now but thank you so much it was really a great presentation
I appreciate okay. it. Thanks for joining us, Joy. Have Thanks very day. much. Okay, we wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs> stay safe and stay warm. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. 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 Excellent. Okay, let me just.